Intel is and will remain a leading developer of process technology, a major manufacturer of semiconductors, and the leading provider of silicon globally. IDM 2.0 is the leadership combination of three factors. First, Intel's internal factory network, integrated manufacturing, has been foundational to our success, enabling product optimization, improved economics, and supply resilience. As I mentioned on the January earnings call, we will continue to build the majority of our products in Intel fabs. Second, we will also expand our use of third-party foundry capacity across our portfolio to deliver the best products in every category that we participate in. Intel's complementary and strategic use of outside foundries is an underappreciated fact. Today, we use foundries to manufacture many products, including chips for communications, connectivity, graphics, and chipsets. As we grow the business, we expect our engagement with foundries to grow in both size and scope. This includes manufacturing a range of modular tiles on advanced process technologies, including products at the core of our compute offerings for both client and data center segments. To further enable this aspect of our IDM 2.0 model, we are increasing our engagement with TSMC, Samsung, Global Foundries, and UMC, building on our existing long-term relationships. This will provide us with increased flexibility and scale we need to optimize our roadmaps for cost, performance, schedule, and supply, giving us a unique competitive advantage. But there's more. Our IDM 2.0 model has an important third element. Today, I'm announcing our plans to be a world-class foundry business and a major provider of U.S. and European-based capacity to serve customers globally. The digitization of every industry is accelerating the global demand for semiconductors at a torrid pace. But a key challenge is access to manufacturing capacity. Intel is in a unique position to rise to the occasion and meet this growing demand while ensuring a sustainable and secure supply of semiconductors for the world. We conservatively size the foundry opportunity as a $100 billion addressable market by 2025, with most of the growth coming from leading edge computing, which is our expertise. The majority of leading edge foundry capacity is concentrated in Asia, while the industry needs more geographically balanced manufacturing capacity. Intel's advanced manufacturing scale, including operations in the U.S. and Europe, is critical for the U.S. and the world. And we will significantly grow our global operations, starting with increasing our U.S. and European-centric manufacturing capacity to serve the growing demand. We are committed to ensuring this capacity will support commercial customers, as well as address unique government and security requirements in the U.S. and E.U., to deliver this vision, we are establishing Intel Foundry Services, a fully vertical, standalone foundry business led by semiconductor industry veteran, Dr. Randir Thacker, reporting directly to me. This business unit will be completely dedicated to the success of its customers with full P&L responsibilities. This model will ensure that our foundry customers' products will receive our utmost focus in terms of service, technology enablement, and capacity commitments. We will be differentiated from other foundry offerings with a combination of leading edge packaging and process technology, committed capacity in the US and Europe, available for customers globally, and a world-class IP portfolio that customers can choose from, including x86 cores, graphics, media, display, AI, interconnect, fabric, and other critical foundational IP, along with ARM, and RISC-V ecosystem IPs. Intel Foundry Services will provide access to silicon design services to help our customers seamlessly turn silicon into solutions using industry standard design packages. We are ready to engage with customers today, starting with our existing Foundry offerings, and we are expanding imminently to include our most advanced technologies, which are optimized for cutting edge performance making them ideal for high-performance applications. We have already received enormous enthusiasm and statements of support from across the industry, including Amazon, Cisco, Ericsson, Google, IBM, iMac, Microsoft,
Qualcomm, and so many more great names. And to give you a firsthand perspective, I'm super excited to welcome a very special customer, friend, and long-term Intel partner, Microsoft CEO, Satya Nadella. Hello. Thank you so much, Pat, for that warm welcome. It's an honor to be here with you at Intel Unleashed. Microsoft and Intel have a deep history of innovation and partnership spanning hardware, software, and the cloud. In fact, it's no exaggeration to say that the products we made possible together over the last three plus decades have impacted nearly every aspect of our lives, at home, at work, at school, and everywhere in between. Today, we are entering a complete new era as computing becomes embedded in our world. How we interact with people, places, and things is fundamentally changing. We're going through these radical changes in compute architecture from the materials to the semiconductors to the systems across the cloud and the edge. This new era will require new innovation across the entire stack from the silicon to the systems. It'll require technology that adapts as customer workloads change. It'll require technology that is secure against increasingly sophisticated attacks. It'll require deeper partnership than ever before. As chips become more specialized and cloud architectures become more optimized for new workloads, we will need to collaborate to co-design the next generation of systems from the hardware to the systems to the software. That's why we are so energized by your and Intel's vision for IDM 2.0. We applaud your continued investments, both in leveraging the best of what is available around the world and in offering new options for silicon designers that will increase manufacturing here in the United States. Uh, we are excited to build on our partnership as Intel embarks on this next chapter, and I'm looking forward to what we will achieve together and the new opportunities we will create for our customers going forward. Thank you so very much. Back to you, Pat. Thanks, Sacha. The early enthusiasm for the foundry capabilities we can provide is exciting, but it's only one piece of the puzzle. Capacity is also critical. That's why I'm thrilled to announce our plans for Intel's first large-scale foundry operation, which will be in Arizona. We plan to build two new fabs in Arizona located in Intel's Ocotillo campus, with planning and construction activities starting this year. These fabs will support expanding requirements of our current products and customers and provide committed capacity for foundry customers. This represents an investment of approximately $20 billion, which will create over 3,000 permanent high-tech, high-wage jobs and over 3,000 construction jobs and 15,000 long-term jobs in Arizona. Intel values business environments and policies across the globe that encourage investments in semiconductor innovation and manufacturing. To make our new expansion in Arizona possible, we are excited to be partnering with the state of Arizona and the Biden administration on incentives that spur this type of domestic investment. Today, we are announcing Arizona, and I expect that we will be ready to announce our next phase of expansions in the U.S., Europe, and other global locations within the year. With these plans, we will accelerate capital investment to meet our existing customer requirements, as well as the customer response and our ambitions for leading process technology on Intel Foundry services. To put Intel's R&D and capital investments in perspective, our new Arizona investment adds to our many billions of dollars invested in the U.S. and globally. For example, from 2019 through 2021, our U.S. investments will total approximately $27 billion in R&D and $33.5 billion in CapEx. We estimate these investments are creating as many as 25,000 U.S. jobs, an important step in support of the growth of the U.S. economy. We also continue to invest in and expand our manufacturing capabilities globally. For example, Together, our R&D and CapEx investments in Ireland and Israel will total nearly $17 billion from 2019 through 2021. Intel's global advanced manufacturing and scale is also critical for the U.S. government to have a domestic source of state-of-the-art electronics. To that end, we are honored to be competing right now for the U.S. Department of Defense contract to develop a domestic commercial foundry that will also meet the security needs of the U.S. government. Intel has an established track record of success partnering 
with the U.S. government to support critical advanced computing programs. We believe we are the right partner for the U.S. government with our leadership technology, existing U.S. manufacturing footprint, and a strong ecosystem of suppliers and innovators. We are committed to advancing U.S. competitiveness for the future of the country. Finally, And thank you for joining us here today at the future site of Intel's newest and most advanced American factory. I'm Kayvon Esfarjani, and I'm the lead for Intel's global manufacturing and operations. Technology has become an essential part of everyday lives, and the need only is growing. This unprecedented demand for technology has created even more need for innovative products that Intel creates. For example, Intel's innovation and products has been foundational to what the world does today to work from home, to connect, to learn remotely during this pandemic. Intel's world-class manufacturing is at the heart of the company and will be instrumental in enabling Intel's continued leadership and our new era of innovation, what our CEO Pat Gelsinger referred to as IDM Advantage. As Intel shared, IDM 2.0 also includes a new factory business to enable emerging growth opportunity for Intel and support the clinical need for our customers and partners. To help meet this demand, and provide a sustainable and secure domestic supply of semiconductor, Arizona will be our first foundry operation and provide the committed capacity for our customers. We'll hear more from my friend and colleague, Dr. Randir Takur here in just a bit. What we have here in Arizona is truly amazing. For more than 40 years, Arizona has been vital to Intel's ability to deliver the world-class changing technology that we all depend on. Over time, Intel has helped to create an ecosystem of innovation in Arizona. Our annual economic impact here in Arizona is $8.6 billion. I am proud of nearly 12,000 Arizonians that are directly responsible for our amazing success here in Arizona. We also depend on hundreds of Arizona-based companies that we spend billions of dollars each year. We chose Arizona for this new $20 billion investment because Arizona is Intel's largest U.S. manufacturing site with four leading edge fabs that is supported by strong ecosystem of innovation and our deep ties to this community. I can't emphasize enough the incredible, almost magical technological innovation that happens here in Chandler, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in this mega scale operation. We will begin the planning and construction activities immediately and we plan to hire more than 3,000 of the best and brightest Arizonians to support this new factory, bringing a total number of this factory to a mega scale site to six large scale operations. Intel Arizona operation already supports an estimated 40 to 8,000 jobs in our community. And with this new investment, we expect that number to grow even more than 60,000 across the state. 
But most importantly, Intel is going to invest in Arizona in a way that makes our community even more vibrant for everyone. We will continue to lead in responsible business practices, advance diversity and inclusion, and support our commitment to the environmental sustainability and expand opportunities for Arizona's next generation of innovators. We are so proud that the technology that's manufactured here has power to improve the life of every human on the planet. To today's announcement is the start of a new era of innovation and technology leadership for Intel, and I couldn't be more proud to share this with all of you. We are incredibly excited to extend our commitment to the state, strengthen Arizona's ecosystem of innovation, and expand United States leading edge semiconductor manufacturing capacity, starting right here in the United States. Thank you to Governor Ducey, Chandler Mayor Harkey, Maricopa County, Maricopa County, the Arizona legislator, and to U.S. Administration for creating the right conditions for Intel to continue to invest here in Arizona and here in America. And now I would like to welcome our good friend, Arizona Governor Ducey, to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be out and about. Thanks so much. Incredibly positive news. Further evidence that the state of Arizona is a jobs juggernaut. Over the last several decades, I've witnessed Intel's growth here in Arizona. Intel's contributions to our state have been incomparable. And today, we begin a new chapter in this historic partnership. Intel is announcing a new $20 billion investment, the largest private sector investment in Arizona history. With this, Intel will be building two new high-tech semiconductor fabrication facilities. And here's what it means. Thousands of new jobs. These facilities high wage jobs to the state of Arizona on top of the already 12,000 jobs Intel supports here. That means that we're proving once again that Arizona is the best place in the world to manufacture high-tech. Today's announcement is also a huge win for you manufacturing. Let's bring semiconductor manufacturing back to the United States. Let's bring it back to Arizona. We're all familiar with the five C's of Arizona. Copper, cattle, cotton, citrus, and climate. And today, I think we can safely add a new one. Chips. With, with Intel leading the way right here in Chandler. The only thing better than made in the USA is made in Arizona. Intel's contributions to our state extend far beyond jobs and manufacturing. Over the years, Intel has been an invaluable partner, helping students by giving back to our schools, supporting healthy forests and rivers, providing pandemic relief, and of course, making it possible for us all to stay connected with their technology. On behalf of the state of Arizona, I want to express my sincere gratitude to Chief Executive Officer Pat Gelsinger and the entire team at Intel for their unwavering commitment to our state. I'm also grateful for the partnership.
partnership we've had with the Department of Commerce and look forward to furthering that partnership under Secretary Gina Raimondo. And I want to give a special thanks to President Karen Fan and Speaker of the House Rusty Bowers, leaders Rebecca Rios and Reginald, Reginald Bolding for working together and making sure to keep Arizona the best place in the world for advanced manufacturing. Today, when people think high tech, they think of Arizona. And that means tremendous things for our state, for our country, and for future generations of Arizonans. With limitless opportunity on the horizon, we look forward to a bright future ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Ducey. Intel is very fortunate to have such a strong advocate for high-tech manufacturing here in our community. To commemorate today's announcement, we are pleased to present to you this Intel wafer. Where did we put it? It's right there. Okay. And uh, this is really in recognition. Now we have a video message from Secretary Raimondo from the U.S. Department of Commerce. So with that, let's go ahead and join you all this afternoon. ...about a virtual element. I am so excited about Intel's announcement today and its plan to build two new semiconductor facilities in Arizona representing an investment of $20 billion. An investment of this scale will help to preserve U.S. technology innovation and leadership, strengthen U.S. economic and national security, and protect and grow American jobs. I'm told that this foundry operation would create over 3,000 permanent high-tech, high-wage jobs, over 3,000 construction jobs, and 15,000 local jobs in Arizona. Here at the Department of Commerce, we have a simple mission to spur good paying jobs, empower innovation and growth, and help American workers and businesses compete. Today we're celebrating an example of American and innovation and business growth. Semiconductors are the heart of much of our economy and millions of hardworking Americans of all backgrounds and experiences depend on them. They power life-saving medical devices that doctors and patients rely on. They power computers that allow for online and remote learning to help ensure every student has the opportunity for quality education regardless of where they live. And they power smartphones that let us connect with friends and loved ones even when we're apart, something all of us have become too familiar with this past year. And they are essential to America's economic and national security. Semiconductors underpin the critical technologies of the future, such as artificial intelligence, 5G, and quantum computing, technologies that could fundamentally transform our society for the better and power the technology and infrastructure needed for example, to make cities and energy systems smarter and more efficient, and in the process, help address the climate crisis. As President Biden has said, the U.S. is the birthplace of this technology, but over the years, we have underinvested in production and hurt our innovation edge, while other countries have learned from our example and increased their investments in the industry. Today, the United States accounts for 12% of global semiconductor capacity. Only 6% of the new capacity and development in the next five years will be in the U.S. China plans to add approximately 40% to 
of the new global capacity and could reach 24 percent of the world's capacity in 2030. As other foreign countries seek to strengthen their industrial base and become increasingly self-sufficient, it is vital that America does the same. Last month, President Biden signed an executive order focused on reviewing critical elements of U.S. supply chains with an emphasis on semiconductors. This review is essential to help us chart a path forward that provides us with secure, sustainable source of semiconductors produced in America. As Secretary of Commerce, combating the semiconductor shortage, investing in our workers, and promoting American manufacturing of semiconductor technology are going to be a priority of mine. Today's announcement is a great example of the benefits of American ingenuity. Thank you, Intel, for your leadership and your investment. So finally, I want to welcome my colleague, Dr. Randir Thakur. As you heard, our new senior vice president, as well as the lead for our Thank you very much, K1. Thank you, Governor Ducey, and all of the distinguished guests for being here today and celebrating this exciting announcement with us. I especially want to thank Governor Ducey and local government officials for your leadership in assuring the safety and well-being of our 12,000 Intel employees in Arizona over the course of this pandemic. Thank you very much. I am Randir Thakur, and I will be leading the Intel Foundry Services. Currently, I serve as Chief Supply Chain Officer for the company. Today is a very important day in Intel's history, and I am thrilled to be here with you. Our CEO, Pat Gelsinger, showed Intel's new IDM 2.0 strategy that is based on powerful combination of three capabilities, Intel's internal foundry network, strategic use of external foundry capacity, and launch of Intel foundry services. Intel is the only company with the depth and the breadth of software, silicon and platform, packaging and process, with at-scale manufacturing that customers can depend on. To meet the accelerating global demand for semiconductors and advance our IDM 2.0 strategy, we will expand our manufacturing capacity, starting with plans to invest $20 billion for two new fabs in Arizona. This $20 billion investment is exciting for Intel's future, Arizona's future, and the future of global electronics industry. Semiconductors are the fuel of po that powers our digital age. These new factories will provide critical new capacity to enable our current and future customers to deliver innovations that have the power to improve the life of every human being on the planet. Our foundry business will leverage some of the most advanced technologies on the planet. We will combine leading-edge process and packaging technology, including our breakthrough 3D packaging with a world-class design IP portfolio. We will provide design services that helps our customers turn silicon into technology solutions. And we have seen tremendous excitement over our announcement from industry partners like Microsoft, Amazon, Cisco, IBM, and Qualcomm. Intel is the only U.S.-based manufacturer of state-of-the-art semiconductors, which puts us in a unique position to serve these companies and many others. Today, we enter into foundry business with a customer focus and service mindset. 
Intel Foundry Services will be a standalone business reporting to our CEO, Pat Gelsinger. We will ensure our customers receive world-class service, technology, and capacity from a global leader in corporate social responsibility. There is real demand for more foundry choices, and Intel Foundry Services will be uniquely positioned to serve the growing momentum for U.S. and European secure capacity. This is wonderful news for the city of Chandler and the state of Arizona. We are excited to continue our long tradition of innovating and investing in Arizona. We have many valued suppliers and partners who support us. Hundreds of local companies stand to benefit from our announcement today. We are grateful for our partnership with the state of Arizona and the Biden administration for creating a business environment that encourages investment in semiconductor innovation that helps make this new expansion possible. I will close today by bringing us back to our CEO's strategy of moving into Intel IDM 2.0. Driving IDM 2.0 implementation successfully will mean leading process, product, supply, and cost. This comes at a unique time in our history. It is extraordinary to see great enthusiasm and support from the government, from our customers, and ecosystem partners. I want to thank all of you for being here today at this highly strategic and historic moment for Intel, for the state of Arizona and the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you, Randier. Thank you, Governor Ducey. Thank you for all the elected officials. Thank you, Arizona, for uh, making this amazing day possible. I once again very, very excited and proud for this moment, for this new era for Arizona, for semiconductor industry, as well as here in the United States of America. This concludes our event, folks. And, uh, Please be safe, have a good day, and we hope to see you soon. Bye for now.